Amen. What is this? We don't know. Yes, I love this one. You see the tracks running along here to this little circular type object. And it's rolled along, leaving tracks on the moon. Now, your, my first thought was, oh, well, it came, it was up here on the top of this crater, and it rolled off and rolled down the, the side of the crater, which is possibly so. Now, unfortunately, this came out of a book, and uh, the reproduction, reproduction is not very good, but I, I've seen a clear photograph, and the tracks go down into the crater, so it rolled up the side of the up crater, the and then down the side of the crater. Something's moving around on the moon. Hmm. What is it? Don't ask me. I'm just giving you the information. More tracks on the moon. And uh, here's an odd little X in the middle of a crater. We don't know what this is, but it's all very odd. The day before the Apollo 11 landed on the moon, the uh, astronauts reported sighting some mysterious lunar lights in an area where scientists believe there are volcanoes. This is back when they were still saying there was volcanic activity on the moon, so it was okay to release this story. And uh, he said it was, uh, it was in the crater Aristarchus, in the northeastern part of the moon's face. And astronomers had claimed observing bright spots in the area, which they appear to be volcanoes. And all, Buzz Aldrin said, well, the area is definitely brighter than anything else I can see. And uh, so this has all been dutifully reported, but then it goes dark. You don't hear any more about that. So what is with the moon anyway? Um, when I was in school, we were taught the moon broke away from the Earth. And maybe that's what created the big hole, which is now the Pacific Ocean. But now that they say we've been to the moon and we've got lunar rocks, and they don't match the same composition as what's on the Earth, Plus, they found rocks on the moon that date back before 8 billion years ago, which is older than the age of the Earth. Then, now it's changed. Now the idea is the capture theory, that the moon came along and was captured in the uh, gravitational field of the Earth. Something like that, see? Oh, it comes bobbing around, it gets caught, it goes back. The problem is this. If here's the Earth and here comes the Moon and it's caught and it's pulled back, then the Moon should be in an elliptical orbit, kind of wobbling around the Earth. But it's not. It's in a near perfect circular orbit and stationary. One side always facing the Earth. We know this. You were taught this in school, but you really had never stopped to think about it. How did it get like that? I said, Asimov famous science fiction writer and a, and a very noted scientist said the moon shouldn't be where it is. How did it get there? And, by the way, the moon is at the exact distance away from the Earth so that when there is a solar eclipse, it is, covers the exact circumference of the sun. You can see the corona of the sun all around it, but you can't see the sun because it's at the exact distance from the Earth where it blocks out just the exact circumference of the sun. Whoa, oh, that's pretty precise. How does that happen naturally? The answer is, it cannot. So that means somebody parked the moon. But here we get to the conundrum of extraterrestrials. Because we all know there's no such thing as extraterrestrials. But we also know that the moon is in a very unusual orbit, and somebody must have parked it there. It's been there since our recorded history, so we know we didn't do it. And so, since we know there's no such thing as extraterrestrials, how do we deal with this subject? We don't. We just don't talk about it. Okay? Go ask some of your stronger friends. How did the moon get there? And let them start shuffling and jiving and trying to come up with an explanation, because we don't know. So apparently somebody came in and parked the moon exactly where it is. And the moon's orbit is nearly perfect circular to the Earth with only a slight wobble, which just coincidentally matches the slight wobble of the uh, orbit of the Earth. And it's also at the equator. There also appears to be pyramids on the moon. You can see what appears to be pyramids in this... Uh, crater up here. 
and in other areas too. Interestingly enough, the pyramids that are sighted on the moon are in the same configuration as the three major pyramids on the Giza Plateau. And if that's not odd enough, we look at Teotihuacan outside Mexico City, and if you'll simply shift that thing around, they're in the same configuration as the pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Now, how does that get to be? Something's going on here, folks. And now, of course, we see the pyramids on Mars. Okay? And the famous space on Mars. Now, just for you all tonight, I've got a special treat for you. I'm going to show you a close-up <coughs> of the face on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Enough of that with Actually, here's the face on Mars. And then, of course, when NASA it finally was, you know, the, it got to be a big deal, they finally showed us this picture. Oh, yeah, well, we can really see that one. And by the way, they, there's been much more further work done on this. This is kind of an old slideshow. And now they, they've actually done computer work on it. And there, there's something on the face of Mars. And again, we didn't put it there. But we know there's no extraterrestrials, so let's just don't talk about that. By the way, here's another face on Mars. I think, I think everybody can kind of see this one. And I don't know. This is in my huff file. It is possible that those are just natural formations there, that you make a face out of it. Kind of like you do making a, the face of Jesus out of a cloud or something, you know. But it's still pretty amazing. And, of course, we've got the rover sojourner that went up there and crawled around for a few feet. And uh, they said, see, no life on Mars. <laughs> well, excuse me, think about this. What if we lived on Mars and we sent a little rover and it landed in Antarctica and it, and it roamed around for about 20 or 30 feet? Hey, no life on the earth. <laughs> By the way, it's all changing. It's all changing. Uh, we now know there's water on the moon. We now know there's winds on the moon. We know there's water on Mars. They just, they just were finally announcing that last week. Okay, so everything you think you know about moon and Mars, you don't know. Because they haven't told you and it's changing constantly. This kind of leads to the question, well, if there's ETs been around here, how long have they been here? Or did our ancestors come from space? Well, you go back to the Sumerian tablets, which are probably the oldest records on the world. In fact, actually, you go to the Hindu Vedas, and they talk about the violence, the flying machines that went through the air, and all their God carried their gods around. And that they had, by the way, they had uh, some sort of weaponry that could destroy a whole city with a single strike. Then you go back to the uh, Sumerian tablets, and this was all etched in clay back about uh, seven, eight thousand years ago. Predates the Egyptians by three or four thousand years. Predates the Bible by five thousand years. And they're telling us that the Anunnaki came to the earth. Well, who's the Anunnaki? Well, that translates as those who came from the heavens to the earth. Well, let me clear something up here. I'm not sure if I get into this. Let me see if I get into it. There is a common theme all over the earth in all the ancient legends and stories. And the common theme is flight. The Chinese had the flying dragons. The Egyptians had the flying boats. The uh, the Sumerians had their flying disc. We all know the story of Ezekiel in the Bible as a fiery wheel. You know, if that wasn't a UFO experience, I don't know what was. And we have artifacts, anomalies, <coughs> as the scientists would call them, because it doesn't conveniently fit into the little homogenized history that we've all been told. We've got these little dudes that have been found down in Colombia and dated back several thousand years. It looks like a little jet plane to me. And by the way, I don't think I have a graphic of this, but some of you have probably seen this picture. Yep. Uh, my wife and I just got back from a trip to Egypt and in Seti's temple up on the ceiling, you see these reliefs. And I swear to God, one of them looks like an Apache helicopter. And right next to it is a little fat jet with wings and a tail, exactly like you're seeing here. It's like, what in the world were these people drawing, you know? And, and is this some kind of just incredible coincidence? 
Carter was there. 